What's up everyone? It's our two year wedding anniversary. Time have flown by, but we're here celebrating on a little sexy weekend away. We also want to share with you what it's like being freshly married and um, whether you're a Christian or not. Um, so here are three newlywed secrets. Secret number one is don't play by the rules. Remember, you are two very unique people with a very unique relationship. Some people will give you good advice and some people not so good. A process that another couple uses might not be right for you guys. For example, not everyone needs a swanky, expensive wedding and not everyone needs to have a year off ministry after they get married. I didn't get married to settle down or to grow up. No, I got married because I met someone bing, bing, who was gonna give me double the firepower, double the adventure and double the fun and think about the relationship you're in. Does it do something similar? When we say don't play by the rules, we're more saying don't play by the rules of the world or what other people tell you. Play by the rules with what God is saying. Secret number two, let's talk about sex. Baby. We've actually decided as a couple to talk about sex more with other people because in the church it's one of those subjects that's a bit like I'm fine with what sex. <laughs> well. First thing I want to say that porn and masturbation is not going to prepare you for marriage. It's totally different. It's way more fun in marriage. It's also way more silly. It's all new and there's much more of a process behind it, which you don't always see. We both still had RV plates when we got married on our wedding night. And I think it just saved us from a lot more comparison and maybe some other obstacles that could have got in the way. I personally had a really warped view of sex growing up. Um, I've spent a lot of my time working with girls who are um, in prostitution or come out of prostitution and therefore saw sex as something that was defiled and unholy. Um, the same with Hollywood and watching films. Um, that's not a realistic portrayal of what um, sex is like. Instead, it's something so beautiful from God and I had so much healing on the journey, especially before our wedding day. Just God teaching me and showing me what um, he really um, desires sex to be. If you're watching this and you have had sex before marriage, it's okay. God wants to speak through that situation. He wants to um, do some restoration and he wants to love you through it. So just get before him and get around some good people and chat about it. I also think there is a lot of guilt and shame surrounding this subject because we don't know how to deal with it or express it to others and we actually just hide it. I know for me, I just hid it from those around me. Um, but actually, the one of the biggest breakthroughs for us was just sitting down and sharing our past, um, sharing where we'd come from and actually both of us speaking over each other. Um, this is how I see you. This is who you are. This is who God has called you to be and almost restarting going into our marriage. So honesty and vulnerability are really key to make sure you're starting off your marriage in the right place. And just to say that you won't understand fully um, why you saved yourself for somebody until your wedding night, um, until you're before the one that you made your covenant with. And I think I questioned so many times for God, with God, why am I doing this? What is the purpose of keeping myself it would, would have been so easy just to, to give my virginity away, but God was actually preparing me for that um, beautiful, intimate moment that I just get to share that with one person. I remember reading in a book once about how kids in a park need fences because it creates safety for them. It's not, it doesn't spoil their fun. They get to have so much liberty and freedom within the space that's been assigned to them. Um, if there wasn't fences, if there wasn't walls, they'd be playing on the road and it would be dangerous. And that's a picture of how our Father God puts boundaries in place within our lives, not because he's sapping fun or not for harm, he puts them there because he knows that that's best for us. Boundaries are healthy and they are good and actually within that boundary of sex within marriage, it's, we get to see the most purest, beautiful, most holiest form of sex there could ever be. Sex is warfare and it's an incredible weapon and it terrifies the devil because that's when we're at our most connected is when we're it's so so intimate nothing can come against that so in that case another top tip i have is to have sex as much as possible that leads us nicely onto our third secret which is about connecting you'll hear a lot of people say things like oh marriage is all about communication and yes that is true but it's more than that it's about connecting. Communicating our thoughts is great, but let's always aim to connect. 
Another quote I heard somewhere is that when it comes to conflict, winning is a poor substitute for connecting. It's just because Joseph sees something one way and I see it another way. It doesn't mean that Joseph sees it wrong. It just means that I need to understand him. So don't listen to give advice, listen to understand. Often in conflict, there is a deeper why connected to the hurt. I can respond crazy dramatically to something. I'm actually not responding to that thing. I'm maybe responding to um, that it's triggered something or it's triggered a hurt. So spend some time together and with the Holy Spirit working out what exactly that pain and hurt is coming from and how you can deal with it properly. If you are newlywed or you're about to get married, can you genuinely say from the bottom of your heart, I love Jesus more than you? And can they say, I love Jesus more than you. If you both can say that, then I think that's a really solid foundation for you guys to build on. This takes a lot of learning, but your spouse, my husband is not the be all and end all. I, my joy doesn't depend on him. My um, existence doesn't depend on him. It, it depends on God and he is my source of joy and my source of life. Verse of the day from Megan, go. In John 15, 12, it says, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Jesus is our greatest example. If we follow him, read him, study him, look at him, we get all the tips, everything we need for life to be able to love our husband or wife so, so well. Other quick tips are, and secrets are kissing often, reading the Bible and praying together, worshiping together, um, playing games together, being silly. Joseph likes to tickle me, that's a good one. Um, what else? 